Todd Messick. I've known Todd for years. Todd used to be, uh, and probably still are, a fantastic photographer. Cool. He used to be uh -huh. one of our staff photographers when I was with Quicksilver. Oh, you got were, it on. You know, were yeah. with us then. And, cool. well, now you're on our set. You've got some surfboards. What is it? How'd you get involved? All right. Uh, well, surfing's always been a love. Up front, or where do you want it to on? Surfing's like always uh, or across the board? been of interest, you know, obviously through shooting photos and seeing the surfing, growing up with it. Um, just as a hobby, uh, always shaped and had an interest in it. And then I uh, shaped a big pig that uh, I surfed pretty much every day. The waves were crappy around town, and uh, some friends got wise to it or wanted to jump on them. And next thing I knew, I was shaping boards. So. And Art in Motion is the, is the label. Art in Motion is the label we're doing. Um, came up with the name after just shaping boards, realizing you know the shaping process is kind of like art. You know, and it really is uh, pieces of art you get just you get to run with and, and you know, catch ways with versus photography, which was something that you do creatively and then it goes on a wall and it stays there. So these are neat because they're three dimensional and you get to have a lot of fun with them. So and what's what's your favorite board or you know to ride and to shape? Um, well generally anything that's wider tail, I mean I've got this obsession with wide tail. Um, when I was a kid I got hooked on the, the Shane Haran lasers app. I went that's with that's that school that of thought. Looks like that. And uh, it was either the MR school or the Shane school, and I, although I love MR to death, and, and uh, so all my friends were riding twin fins, I got hooked on the single fin philosophy, and then as I got into snowboarding and, and, and did that professionally, it all kind of carried back into the single fin for some weird reason. I don't, I don't know, I don't shape and have not shaped any multi-fin boards in the whole time I've been doing it. They're all single fins based on the idea of how single fins ride, whether it's a nine foot log, a pig, or a, kind of a this board I've come up with but this board here I took a ton of concave through it and uh, see it. and so you're kind of using it the rails as wings so it's almost like a finless in, in theory very low rocker through the front and then the single fin just gets the drive that you need but if I can take the fin off completely and ride that board without the fin that'd be the ideal because stays in the pocket does just what the lasers app had wanted and did do back then this is just taking the concave concept that are on all the merits and everybody's you know the loss and all the the high performance so it's kind of a twist on everything i could come up it's like a two a two stroke basically it's not a it's not a cruiser by any means in fact i shaped this board for andrew doheny and he wrote it and it was a little big for him because it's a 510 and he rides a smaller board but just the idea and the interest is just uh just puts you in a different line. For me, coming from snowboarding as a background and doing it that way, it just you can set a different line. You can stay in the pocket and draw different things because everybody seems to be on multi fins and they're going in the progressive state. But for me, I like to stay more where the energy's at. So it's just kind of you know a different twist on it. But yeah. Your website. I thought I read something where it said created out of necessity. Exactly. Okay. Building at what? You I, yeah. Needed what? That obviously something different for your style, obviously. Uh, well, I got hooked on longboarding a while ago, and uh, but most of the logs are just that. They're really lethargic and kind of hard to ride, and they're really planky. And where we ride it, like Blackies is pretty much the home break, and um, it's a it's a ton of little waves, and it's a lot of fun. But generally, they're they're so planky you can't really do a lot on them. So when I got onto the Pig, it was a really like new concept for me, even though it's an old, you know, this whole thing was based off the Velzy Pig. I just, it's like a pig on acid is what I like to think of it. Cause it really, you crank it up and I took the, the tail out as wide as I could think it needed to be, but then I got hooked on it. Now I've kind of refined the thicknesses, but other than that, the, the idea of the board, you can turn them like on a dime. It just allows you to ride a two foot wave and do, do directional changes and stuff that you can't do on a, what they call a nose rider today wide nose, narrow tail. I don't know how it even got there from when Velzy did it back in 50. It's like that you were on it, you know, so. One thing that uh, I noticed uh, of the old school, when the, the longboard generation came through, they were calling them skags. That looks like a skag, not a fin. Uh, that's... Uh, S-K-E-G, right? That's an 11-inch New Wave of Lightweight that that's we're rocking beautiful. on that thing. And, uh, beautiful if it's not coming at you. <laughs> yeah. And I'm hooked on that fin, and... Um, I ride a Takayama 10-inch fin pivot, and so those two fins are my favorite, and I swear by them. So I, I like to keep a box in that board because it gives you the option, it gives you some freedom. So um, 
But that fin in particular is a ton of fun because you can actually get on the nose on these boards and turn the board on nose. So it allows for more freedom. It just comes down to having as much fun and catching as many waves as you can. So. Okay. That's what it, you know. So the pig on acid right here, would you ever put a leash around your ankle and tether that to that board? Uh, no need. Never. Like Roy Russell said, leashes are for dogs, man. You know, <laughs> you stick by that. On the shoreboard, however, it's a little more crazy. You got to keep the board. You got to be able to catch it from going out and stabbing someone, but you know. On that nice. pig, Todd, it looks like a really classic board. Looks like a fun board. What does that retail for? Uh, we're doing these, uh, we're calling it recession pricing, keeping it right at $1,100. Show special with for all me. all the bells and whistles. With you, we'll need, we can talk later. But, uh, Not, but that's, I, I get all my glass work from uh, with Steve Albin at Aloha Glassing, and he does a lot of the Dewey Webers and Robert August and stuff. But I go to him for all my resin work because I want it done, like you said, classic or traditional. I'm a purist in, in that I want it a certain way, but there's some twists to it, you know. Just because I know guys are looking at that. What what is the price on that? It's just roughly well, all the bells and whistles is eleven hundred, which 1, is, bucks. is lower than, than some. But I you know I want to be fair and competitive. It's expensive. The glass jobs are very expensive Absolutely. to be done properly. And all the boards that we do, all the long boards are resin tent work. It's not paint jobs. So um, and that craft is also going kind of by the wayside. Not too many guys do resin tent works anymore. It's all it's kind of like an art form in itself. So. Well, Todd, I think you could get one for fifteen hundred. I'll, I'll negotiate off camera. Yeah, I'm interested. Right. I want to know more about Art in Motion. How do I find out more information and where your, your boards are sold? Uh, you can go to our website, artinmotiondesigns.com. And uh, we've got some boards at HSS. Uh, those guys are showing the love and, and letting us uh, put the boards in there. So it's just word of mouth, little by little. If you see me in the water, ask to borrow the board. You're welcome to it. That's how we're selling one board at a time. People see, see us on them, and they're... they're uh, you can do things on them you just can't do on the other ones. So. Well, I know I catch a lot of waves on that thing. Todd Messick, Thank look you. like you're doing well for yourself. Best of luck to you. Thank you, Todd. And you guys check him out. Todd Messick, Art in Motion. Go to his website, learn more about his equipment and where to buy it. Coming up next, we've got some great things taking place. I'm not going to tell you what it is. Get on the edge of that seat. We'll be right back from Del Mar.